What is good, everybody? Welcome back to the Blitz City Podcast. I'm your host, Kobe Orr, and today, as promised, this is part two of my top 10, no, no, this isn't the top 10, of my top HBCU football transfer portal prospects. That is a very long title, and it will be shortened, but you get you get the premise of the, of the video. So I decided to make this only five players, even though I have a lot more that I can tell y'all about. So we can keep going with this series if you continue to want to see this series. Um, also, a lot of these guys, some of these guys, like the third, the third guy I'm going to talk about, he's already been offered by schools like Jackson State and other HBCUs. So this video was made before he was offered, and I want y'all to know um, I'm just, I guess I'm on point with it. You know, like he was already on my list before he got those offers. So the first guy we're going to start off with is Fabian Marks. Fabian Marks is a 5'10", 191 pound defensive back from the University of Utah. He's entered the transfer portal. This guy is available. So he has played in 11 games, okay, for Utah this past season. Only had two pass deflections and a few tackles. Um, and the kid was a three-star prospect coming out of high school. But when I look at Fabian March, right, he may not have had much success at Utah. As a matter of fact, him and a few other guys in that secondary for Utah entered the transfer portal. But when I look at Fabian Marks in particular, because I watched all of them, Fabian Marks to me stuck out. This kid gives me Al Young vibes. Y'all remember Al Young, the DB um, from Southeastern Missouri. I think that was the school he transferred from when he came to Jackson State. He gave me Al Young vibes. Like he's He looks like he's very reliable in coverage, and he looks like he's a great asset in stopping the run. He gets physical. He gets after it. He gets his nose in there, and he makes the tackle. He's not afraid of it. So I like Fabian Marks as a prospect. So whoever wants him, whichever HBCU needs a DB, you should consider Fabian Marks. Next up, Antonio Meeks. Now, Antonio Meeks should come at no surprise to anybody, but if you don't know about him, we all know Kashawn uh, Johnson from Alabama State is the top wide receiver in HBCU football in the transfer portal. He's the biggest prize at wide receiver. But not far behind him is Antonio Meeks. Do you know how hard it is for a guy at the Division II level to get attention the way that this kid did, to garner attention the way that he did? He has F uh, FBS schools contacting him because of how great he played at Tuskegee, a Division II school. Now, He's 6'2", 190 pounds, and what I love most about him is the route running. I mean, man, it is his route tree is special. He's just a naturally gifted route runner, and you have to credit Tuskegee for developing him in these past two years because he's going into his junior season. So in 2022, as a true freshman, okay, he had 31 receptions, 692 yards, and six touchdowns and then he follows that up with 2023 even though he was injured for part of the season he still managed to put up 43 receptions 745 yards and five touchdowns in his sophomore campaign now going into his junior season he's done enough to earn the uh scholarships from bigger schools and i can't wait to see where he ends up but i know this is a guy that everybody should be offering right alongside Kashan. i'm telling you He's it. He's legit. Okay. After him, this is the guy I was talking about. Lardarius Webb Jr. So Lardarius Webb Jr. was recently offered by a couple of HBCUs, even some uh, FBS schools. But I think his latest offer came from Jackson State. Lardarius is a 5'10", 174 pound safety from Oklahoma State. Here's the thing about him. He was one of the top Juco defensive players when he left the Juco ranks. I think out of the Juco top 50, he was ranked number 34. Really good player. He got to Oklahoma State and did not find success. He was projected to be uh, just one of those pieces in the secondary, and he never was able to carve out a role at Oklahoma State. But just because he didn't, it did not work out there does not mean he isn't a valuable asset because he is. This kid has game. Being one of the top 50 players in Juco, that's not a fluke. He's talented. He he just went to the wrong school. That's all it is. Who Whoever gets him, whoever gets him will get a talented piece for this secondary. After that, here's a guy who I'm really excited about. Roger Walters, a.k.a. Fresh. All right, so Fresh Walters. Coming from the, uh, the University of Charlotte. So Roger 
is a wide receiver. He's 5'10", 175 pounds, and this kid has three years left of eligibility. Three years left. Off the bat, I looked at his tape, and I saw that speed. I saw that acceleration, and I said, this is explosiveness on a Rico Powers level. I said, this explosiveness, him getting up the field so quick, is trouble. Like, the separation this kid can create with with his talent, it's something It's something special, man. I'm telling you. So, like I said, he's fast. He gets up the field really fast. He's quick. He can get a lot of separation. But the thing that stood out the most is that when it's time to come down with that catch, the way he's able to contort his body to come down with those catches, not a lot of receivers can do. I'm going to be honest with you. I believe he can make the contested catches. He can make the spectacular catches. He can make any type of catch you need him to make. He can high point it. He can. This kid is athletic in every sense of the word. And not a lot of people is talking about him. But if an HBCU, who, whatever HBCU, gets him, you're going you gonna to find yourself with one of the top receivers in the conference. One of the most explosive receivers in the conference. And I'm willing to bet that. So... Last but not least, I only did five players. I didn't want to give y'all another 20-minute video. That's just a lot um, for both of us. James Mon III, he's a DB. Going into his redshirt sophomore year, he's coming from Indiana. James Mon III, and his, he only played in two games, but I tell you what, I'd be willing to take a chance on him. I would be willing to take a chance on him because I love the way he plays the position. This is a man-to-man -man corner right here. You can... The swagger he got, it, it's showing through the film, right? The swagger he got. He loves to play one-on-one. -on -one. He invites it. He don't want that safety help. He wants to be the one. He wants to be that guy. And I get it. That's probably why he in the transfer portal right now. He probably ready to show what he got. Any, any HBCU should jump on James Martin III. I love the way he plays the game. He's lengthy. Patient, okay? Good feet. Great technique when playing the position. Doesn't give up on the play. I love him. And he has enough recovery speed just in case he does get burnt. Because it will happen from time to time at DB. And I, I'm a fan. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just a fan. So, these are my top five uh, target transfers for HBCUs. You let me know down below in the comment section what you think if you want me to continue with this series or not. Um... And who who do you who would you like to see play for your school? With that being said, y'all are watching the Blitz City Podcast. I'm your host, Kobe Orr. Until next time, peace.